Hello and welcome to Baiju's Exam Prep IAS. Let's take up the daily quiz for today. Let's look at the first question. During the 2022-23 Union Budget, the Finance Minister announced the establishment of a dedicated promotion task force for which sector? Domestic drone production or the AVGC sector which stands for animation, visual effects, gaming and comics, electric and hybrid vehicles or 5G and other high-speed communication networks. Amongst the given options, the correct answer is option B. While presenting this year's union budget, the finance minister announced the establishment of a dedicated promotion task force to promote the AVGC sector in India. There was a long-standing demand from the animation, visual effects or VFX, gaming and comics industry for greater support from the government so that India could emerge as the hub of AVGC industry. So in line with this industry demand, the government has established a dedicated promotion task force which will come out with a roadmap to promote the AVGC sector in India. This topic was taken up for discussion because we have an article in the Hindu according to which the government is betting big on animation, gaming, VFX and comics as India has tremendous potential in this sector. As the country has a number of startups in this sector and since India has a large pool of talented resources, it believes that India could soon become the content creation factory of the world which could produce high quality animation, VFX and as well as high definition games and comics. This industry in particular is expected to benefit from the upcoming rollout of 5G technology which will enable the sector to capitalize on high-speed communication thereby driving the growth of the AVGC industry. So the Ministry of Information and Broadcasting has taken the lead to nurture India's AVGC industry based on the roadmap that is going to be laid out by this dedicated task force. Now let's look at the second question. The Coastal Regulation Zone Norms or the CRZ norms notified in 2018 is based on the recommendations of which committee? Madhav Gargil Committee, Shailesh Nayak Committee, Kasturi Rangan Committee or the Rangarajan Committee? The correct answer is option B. See, the Rangarajan Committee dealt with measurement of poverty levels. Whereas Madhav Gargil Committee and the Kasturi Rangan Committee dealt with the topic of eco-sensitive zones in the Western Ghats. Whereas the Shailesh Nayak committee dealt with CRZ guidelines based on which the CRZ norms were notified in 2018. This topic has been taken up because we have an article in the Hindu which makes a reference to the CRZ norms. The article itself is not relevant for us as it deals with a political issue in Maharashtra related to the enforcement of the CRZ guidelines. But it gives us an opportunity to talk about CRZ norms and the recommendations of the Shailesh Nayak committee. See, coastal areas are ecologically very sensitive and hence human activity and industrial activity in the coastal areas has to be tightly regulated by the government. So for conserving and protecting India's coastal environment, the CRZ guidelines were notified for the first time in 1991. A couple of decades later, they were revised in 2011 and these guidelines of 2011 provided for stringent regulation of economic activities in the coastal areas. But this led to opposition from states and union territories because they found the stringent rules of 2011 to be hampering economic growth and development including tourism in the coastal areas. So based on this opposition from the states and union territories and as well as from the private industry, the union government constituted a committee under Dr. Shailesh Nayak to review the 2007 rules and come out with a fresh set of recommendations. So accordingly, the committee reviewed the guidelines and submitted its report in 2015, which provided for several relaxations to the CRZ norms. Even though these relaxations were opposed by environmental activists, as it was seen to be enabling widespread economic development in coastal areas, the government of India went ahead with the recommendations and notified the 2018 guidelines, which has already come into force 
and is being enforced by state governments and the local planning bodies. But the 2018 guidelines has been strongly criticized by environmental activists as it is seen to be diluting the regulatory powers of the central government. Now let's look at the third question. What is the IUCN status of the Greater One Horned Rhino? Is it listed as endangered or critically endangered or vulnerable or near threatened? The correct answer is option C. See the Greater One Horned Rhino or also known as the Indian Rhinoceros. It is largely native to the Indian subcontinent. Historically, its range extended from today's Pakistan across the Himalayan belt covering India, Nepal, Bhutan and extending towards the northeast of India even touching up to Myanmar. This was the historical range of the Indian rhinoceros. But due to extensive hunting and poaching, which was driven by the huge black market that exists for the horn of the rhinoceros, the rhino population in the Indian subcontinent witnessed a substantial decline and along with severe habitat loss, the one-horned rhino has been confined just to a few parts of India, Nepal and Bhutan. Particularly in India, the one-horned rhino can be found in the state of Assam in protected areas such as the Kaziranga National Park and the Pobitora Wildlife Sanctuary. So due to its declining numbers and reducing habitat, it has been listed as vulnerable on the red list of the IUCN. We took up this topic for discussion because according to this article in the Hindu, rhino poachers in the Kaziranga National Park of Assam have escaped from police custody. Now let's look at the fourth question. Its objective is to promote smart, sustainable and inclusive growth and employment opportunities with regard to maritime economic activities. It emphasizes on integration of development of marine economy with social inclusion, environmental sustainability, combined with innovative business model. It is reflected in Sustainable Development Goal No. 14, which calls to conserve and sustainably use the oceans, seas and marine resources for sustainable development. This model of marine development is known as Blue Economy, Sustainable Marine Strategy, Ocean Economy or both A and C. The correct answer is option D. The description given here refers to blue economy or also known as ocean economy. This model of coastal and marine development is promoted by the United Nations and as well as by several countries and several international groupings. This model referred to as blue economy or ocean economy model focuses on the sustainable exploitation of marine resources and it gives priority for social inclusion environmental sustainability and promotion of inclusive growth in the coastal areas. Under this model, there are two key principles. One is the promotion of sustainable exploitation of marine resources and two, ensuring that the benefits that arise out of the sustainable exploitation is largely used for promoting the socio-economic development of the coastal communities. So this essentially is a sustainable inclusive model of growth which is being followed by several coastal states. This unique model of marine economic development finds a mention in this article in the Hindu which refers to consultations between the foreign ministers of India and France. During this interaction, the two foreign ministers have discussed several key issues which are of mutual concern to India and France. They've exchanged their views on the ongoing situation in Afghanistan and Ukraine and they have also called for speeding up the free trade negotiations that are going on between India and the European Union. They have also called for the faster implementation of the India-EU connectivity partnership along with discussing areas of cooperation under the concept of blue economy or also known as ocean economy. Now let's take a look at a question from the 2018 prelims paper. With reference to agricultural soils, consider the following statements. A high content of organic matter in soil drastically reduces its water holding capacity. Soil does not play any role in the sulfur cycle. Irrigation over a period of time can contribute to the salinization of some agricultural lands. Which of the statements given above is or are correct? See, amongst the given statements, 
the first two statements are incorrect so option b is the right answer the first statement is incorrect because actually a high content of organic matter in soil increases the water holding capacity of the soil the second statement is also incorrect because soil does play a major role in the sulfur cycle which helps in circulating the nutrient through the environment the third statement on the other hand is correct because overuse of irrigation can increase soil salinity which in turn affects agricultural productivity now take for example the state of punjab punjab witnessed the same problem following the green revolution during which irrigation was overused leading to increase in saline content which later affected crop productivity in several agricultural fields so option b 3 only is the right answer now coming to the fact of the day let's look at this press release from the ministry of personnel public grievances and pensions this article makes a reference to india's purple revolution and the aroma mission the purple revolution also known as the lavender revolution was launched by the ministry of science and technology along with csir to promote the cultivation of aromatic crops in the state of jammu and kashmir this initiative has been taken up under the aroma mission of csir which aims to boost the production of aromatic oils for which there exists a huge market not just in india but across the world this mission aims to take advantage of the geographical conditions of j and k in order to boost the production of such aromatic crops in order to increase farmers income under the purple revolution the government has promoted the cultivation of lavender which is essentially a purple colored flower that is native to europe but since the same climatic and geographic conditions exist in j and k the government has been promoting lavender cultivation under the purple revolution under this mission the first time farmers have been given free lavender saplings and the same has been offered at very nominal rates for those farmers who are already involved in lavender cultivation this lavender revolution which is part of the aroma mission is in line with the vision of prime minister narendra modi to improve the livelihood of farmers and to boost their income the aroma mission which is pioneered by csir aims to boost the production of high value essential oils for which scientific support is being provided by the indian institute of integrative medicines which is one of the laboratories under csir under this mission the government has been helping the farmers not just by providing planting material and other essential inputs but it is also setting up distillation units for enabling the farmers to extract the aromatic oils this will allow the farmers to become entrepreneurs in this specialized field and will also help nurture the agricultural startups that are centered around the marketing of such aromatic oils currently there is a huge demand within india for such aromatic essential oils but most of it is being imported from europe so boosting the domestic production of these essential oils will also bring down the import bill while creating a lucrative livelihood opportunity for the farmers which will boost their income as well so with this let's conclude our discussion for today thanks for watching